All right, kids, we're looking at the Dos Equis Ambar. Ambar. The original Dos Equis. All right. Jay's calling it Ambar. That's what it says. Ambar is the Spanish word for amber. Okay. So, I'm looking at the label, and one thing that strikes me is being, I don't know, maybe out of the ordinary for mass-produced beer, because it says crafted in Mexico. Crafted. Crafted. Not produced. Not produced. Not thrown together. Crafted. So that tells me that they take quality in this beer. And they're going to... And it shows through. So we're going to go ahead and taste it. And it was a German immigrant named William Haas who started this. Vienna-style lager. In ah, 1890. Style. A little smoke coming off of it. I saw that smoke. You've had this before? No. Can you remember, like, in the 80s, if you look at some old men's magazines from the 80s? Like Playboy. I didn't want to really bring that title up. I was thinking of Esquire or Sports Illustrated, probably. Playboy. They used to heavily promote this beer as, like, and in, in the early 80s, like, say, 82, this was considered, like, a craft beer. You remember that. Woo! Sure smells good. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, I think I got right on with that. Boing. So what I was trying to say, men's magazines like Popular Mechanics, Sports Illustrated, Playboy, um, Penthouse, Motor Trend, you would have seen these ads, and this was positioned as sort of a craft beer. And boy, look at wow. the head on what it. A, what a bang out, bang out flavor I'm getting. I'm going to let the head dissipate. That's creamy. The, the, yeah, the, what I'm seeing on the head I like is a lot of creaminess coming out. And if you look real close, what we were discussing about in previous videos, you can see that all the carbonation is all gases have been let out and we're left with extremely small Extremely tiny, little, tiny, tiny, tiny bubbles. That's pretty water. I mean, you know what? Jeez. Champagne bubbles are bigger than this. These are some of the smallest bubbles I've ever seen. What is the color? This is pretty dark. This is like... Well, that's, that's definitely... Mahogany. Or something. Yeah, it's like a light mahogany color. Like furniture. Like <laughs> something like that. But I'm going to get mine in about another minute. And we can talk more about the beer. Oh, we're waiting for this to disappear. Yeah, so it's a it's a it's a dark leather. Yeah. It's got rich, a great head to it. Rich Corinthian leather. No, um <clears throat> the lacing is incredible. Oh, yeah. We rinsed the glasses very well. Eighteen ninety seven. That was a long time ago and um it's still a popular product, although the green label is much more popular because it's sure. more mass produced. Uh, type audience, yeah. And we did the ambar. I mean, we did the especial, and we've done the bohemia, which we loved. That's their super premium. This is sort of like their mid premium. But like we said, people, this is the original Dos Equis. They used to only have Dos Equis. They added the ambar to the name when the. They came out with the green label, the light, the lighter one, yeah. Yeah, actually, call that, because the lighter color means it's light. Yeah. The, and that was 4.2, wasn't it? 4.2, and this is 4.7. Yeah, so that's right, that's right along the lines of, of, of amber beer. Oh, excuse me, of light beers. Light, light American. Yeah, because Bud Light is 4.2. Right. All right, so I think this is going to be a little richer. Ooh, it smells good. It smells nice. Real mellow. <clears throat> it does. It doesn't even smell like beer. It smells floral. Kind of perfumey a little bit. Kind of nutty. Slightly. I'm, I'm getting more of a perfuminess out of it. Maybe that hop is taking over like that. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and taste it because yeah. it looks like we're getting to that point where we can just taste it yeah. cleanly. Oh, it's way different. <laughs> this is really good. This is a really good drinking summer beer. Just goes there and real, real nice. I'm not tasting too much of the adjunct corn in it. No. 
you get the toasted malt. Now this ain't oh, this, is, this is good. This is real good. It's like semi sweet, um, like a almost like a um, you know how they have that cane that brown sugar you can buy in the box. Yeah, Domino's brown sugar. This is this this has got the three qualities right across the top. I'm telling you right now, it's got taste, alcohol, and balance. This is just this is pretty fantastic. So you would say it's worth the fourteen ninety nine. This is big, and it, the score might go up. <laughs> Remember now, he gave the Modelo Negra an A, so this is like their top rival. This is like the chief competitor of the Negra, the Modelo, which is much stronger. This is going up. This is an A plus. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> an A plus, people. This is A plus. This is A plus, and I'm going to stop at A plus. This is A plus. Yeah, look at the lacing. It's uh, yeah. I mean, it's just incredible. This is this is a well put together beer. It still has a little bit of foam in it or head. It's, you expect in a beer. This is coming from a guy who drinks an enormous amount of craft beer. That's way more expensive than this. I might add. This is really good. Good Mardi Gras parade beer, huh? <laughs> this is a really good, not wreck your neck, and get a really good beer. Oh, beer. This is good. The undertaste is great. It's like, um, just toast. Toast. You know, like, like when you toast bread and it comes out perfect, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's, it is dynamite. Perfect. It's perfect. It's a perfect beer. A perfect beer. You heard that right here, taped or record, not taped, we don't use VHS or beta, but recorded right here on the internet. You said it's a perfect beer. What's it wrong is. with it? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> and if you can find nothing with a beer, nothing wrong with a beer, what is it? Perfect. I would, ima <laughs> I would imagine. Oh. If you can find nothing wrong with a beer, if you can find nothing wrong with it, it's world class. That's my coffee pot kicking off. Okay, I was a little concerned about that. Oh, yeah. I, you know, we, we've had this discussion in the past. If you can find nothing wrong with a beer, if it's perfectly balanced, no matter what style, no matter what alcohol, if you find it perfect balance and there's nothing wrong with it, it's world class. Yeah, it's a copacetic product. I mean, it's like really good. It's really good. And and for some reason, this is going to sound somewhat bizarre. I can imagine like a huge pizza. You're cutting and it's super hot and you're taking out the box. This doesn't even have any uh, kickback uh, flavor-wise. Uh, some of the other beers that we tried, uh, the Modelo had that kind of that fullness from the corn, not the sweetness. I'm not getting that on this. I'm getting the, the balance on it. So I get it. It's a good beer. I would I would highly recommend this. I've never had it before, but I would highly recommend it. Imagine working at the brewery and you'd have to do samples all day. Oh, uh, <laughs> that'd be my dream job. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So ladies and gentlemen, bon temps relay. Some of you are not shocked because you've had experience with Dos Equis and Bar, and you know what it's about. So uh, we're, I, I would say an A. I mean, it's great. We're going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down to Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. <laughs>